A lot of you are probably used to seeing combat related videos on this channel, but today this video comes by popular demand. It's finally time for me to showcase everything boats have to offer and the most efficient ways of building boats in Windbound. I will be covering what is available during each stage of progression as well as effective strength to cost ratio boat builds and tips for sailing in general. Let's get started. The limited resources in Chapter 1 will only allow for grass boat parts. While the grass canoe isn't exactly a strong boat, it gets you from point A to point B, which is really all you need in the early game phase. You do have the option of adding a grass mast to the boat, but it becomes very difficult to control, so I would advise against this. You also have space to add a campfire or a drying rack to the boat, which early on you need, so definitely do this. With the addition of bamboo in Chapter 2, you have an extra boat part type to craft, the deck. On the deck, you can attach a grass or bamboo hull to either side, which allows plenty of space for fires or storage. As you can see in the video, it's very difficult for Kara to row a boat deck, so for this you will need a grass or bamboo mast. If you're going to sail with the wind, make sure the sail is perpendicular to the wind. This will keep the boat moving constantly and you can lower the sail if you need to slow down or reverse. You can't sail directly into the wind, but with a tight sail you can move into it at a slight angle. This is important to know since the wind won't always be moving in a way that suits you. After killing a gloom harrow in chapter 3 you will have access to wood. Wood boat parts require silk so be sure to kill some silk moss too. Wood is the strongest base boat material and from your boat in chapter 2 you can replace some parts right away. Wooden masts will also require some leather to make so if you want to craft these make sure you have plenty of that as well. Wood is available in larger quantities than bamboo so you can easily extend your boat to a 2 deck and 3 hull build with it. With two decks you will have space for two masts, which allows for more speed when sailing with the wind and better control when sailing against the wind. Now that we've covered all the boat parts, let's talk about armouring up. You can use bamboo and wood to armour your boat to a certain extent, but in chapter 4 you can take it to another level. You have two types of protection, hull spikes and hull armour. The hull spikes go from bamboo being the weakest to wooden spikes, with metal spikes being the strongest. The hull armour goes from wood being the weakest to shell armour with metal armour being the strongest. You cannot build both armour and spikes on the same hull, but I think this would be good if it was made a feature. In terms of effectiveness, wood and shell fragments are common enough to build plenty of armour. Build your strong armour on the hulls that are most likely to be struck when sailing. But what if we went even further beyond? With the coloured gems found throughout your journey, you can build figureheads onto your boat that will give it special abilities. The Sentinel Soul Gem can be made into the Gorhorn figurehead which gives your boat a force field capable of withstanding the most fatal blow without damaging the boat. However, the shield will need a while to recharge so you will still need to be careful to some extent. The Storm Eye Gem can be crafted into the Planestalker figurehead which will damage creatures that get too close to your boat. It will kill cropsters before they can make it onto the boat and it can even do some AFK fishing for you when docked as it will kill fish that swim too close to it. The Leviathan's Heart Gem can be crafted into the Gloomharrow figurehead, in my opinion the best of the three. When charged, the figurehead will offer a speed boost to the boat. You can activate this by holding the raise key when your sails are fully up. My recommendation for using this would be for just speed purposes if the seas are calm, or using it when the boat is moving too slowly to get you back up to a good sailing pace. <laughs> Now it's time to showcase this stuff in action. This footage of the crossing was taken during a simple playthrough during DLC 2. For the boat, I'm using a 2 deck, 2 mast and 3 hull build, with the deck and mast being made out of bamboo and the hulls out of wood. I have a gorehorn and planestalker figurehead on each hull at the front and an anchor on the hull at the back. For armour, I have metal armour on the two hulls up front and shell armour underneath. To effectively sail in the crossing, it's important that you don't move at top speed. This is partly the reason I have bamboo masts, as they don't provide as much speed as wooden masts would. Make sure you're always changing the angle of your sails to match the wind so you're consistently moving in the direction you want. Quickly analyse each segment and know the path you want to take through it, and use small movements to keep yourself in the path you want. If you find yourself slipping, you can lower the sails to slow down and reposition, but gaining the speed again will be difficult without a Gloomharrow figurehead. Speaking of gaining speed again, sometimes your boat will dip right into the water and unfortunately there's nothing that can be done about this that I know of, other than staying on top of waves which is really difficult and ineffective. And that should cover everything you need to know about boats in Windbound. Be sure to like and subscribe for more guides like this and feel free to drop a comment below if you have any other tips to add to this or any other guides you want me to cover. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.